And we're live. <laughs> the strawberries look terrible. Yeah. <laughs> Let me turn this. All right. Just a second to get everything lined out here. Uh, the sound in the background is the coffee maker because I forgot to turn it on a half hour ago, like when I prepared it. <laughs> so uh, I'll be getting up in just a minute to get myself a cup of coffee. Mind and Body Co. Built on the Rock Homestead. All the things acres. Camp Patton Family Compound. I said built on the rock. Uh, Inside Kate's Kitchen is back on her original channel. Welcome, Yay, Kate. Kate. <laughs> and I, post, I just posted a link to Kate's original channel. <laughs> there you go. Mama Bear added some to her name. Now it says Mama Bear living on a dime and a prayer. I like it. Tinker's wife. Uh, let's see. Jenny Pennington, Bayou Dawn, Hey Suze. I think that's everybody. Oh, Michigan Daffodil. Michigan Daffodil. I already know. You got it? Well, it's over there. Okay. <clears throat> oh, wow. Debbie's home place. Hello, hello, and welcome everyone. Who go homestead? There you are. My well, shoe is coming untied again. So we had a pretty good day today. Um, we got out in the yard. And did some work that I'm going to tell you about here in a minute. And then we went out and had a little road trip to a couple of places. And that video is going to be published in the morning. So if you don't have the bell rung on our channel, you may want to do that so you don't miss the video that's coming out in the morning. We are making videos. Big Bear Homestead. <laughs> Welcome, Jason and Robin. We are making videos. It's awesome. Right. <laughs> We went so long just kind of uh, really really just burn out and uh we're getting back back into it so glad that you guys stuck around with us and were patient while we didn't make any videos kate, said, that, kate said i had a great day I've been canning for the past eight days nice what are you canning kate carrots and chicken i believe oh i didn't know your name was kate <laughs> i talked to kate mm -hmm. i'm kidding of course I'm kidding. Oh man. So yeah, I'm just waiting for that coffee so I can drink some. <laughs> hey mom. Oh <coughs> wow. <coughs> it takes real talent to choke on nothing. <laughs> Farmer in Dell Acres, good to see you. Mama Bear, got a, a funny for you. Um, that mug that you had made for me, that coffee mug. Uh -huh. uh, Abby found out the hard way that it is not microwave safe. It's got some gold uh, trim on it. <laughs> and uh, yeah. 50 pounds of carrots, 50 pounds of chicken, 15 pounds of hamburger, five pounds of venison, and various. I don't know what's. Oh, sun. sun is it sun dried vegetables? Sun dried. Is that what you mean? Or is, it, or is sundry a thing? I may oh. be dumb. <laughs> Can't <patent. laughs> <laughs> is uh, the micro is the mug in your microwave okay yes both are yeah. okay luckily abby was paying attention it did spark but um i'm on vacation again yes she she caught it pretty quickly and was able to turn it off and get it out of there and switch um switch mugs i talked to uh, you know how he can tell you're off again Mm -hmm. Yeah, the scruff. Well, I would normally be at work today, right now. Mm -hmm. So uh, this is the week. Uh, but I talked to Reagan this morning on the phone from uh, Southern Boy Prepper, and uh, he said he used the "must be nice" line when I told him that I was on vacation again. So it is nice. <laughs> it's earned. Jason's uh, asking if you can chat tomorrow. Yeah, we can definitely chat tomorrow. That would be great. Kate says she has five cases of wide mouth pint jars on my dining room table, all full. That's awesome. That is. That's incredible. <clears throat> We've been dehydrating too. What? I dehydrated honey. Technically, I didn't dehydrate it. I used the dehydrator to warm it because it was crystallized. Melinda. And um, 
I finished it up on the stove, but I got the process started with the dehydrator. It works because I can fit like six or eight jars in the, the magic mill and get them warming. Cause I don't like to do more than like two, two at a time on the stove. <laughs> uh so uh melinda yeah since you're a local um the video that's coming out in the morning we, we went to a couple places today uh i'm not going to talk about where what places you'll see that in the video but uh that video will come out tomorrow morning and we we really enjoyed it it's a couple of hidden gems from uh here in the area how to garden hello kate i Press don't um i don't decrystallize honey in the microwave because the temperature of the microwave is actually too high. It will kill all the benefits of the honey. So I do it on the stove on a low burner, but I only like to do two at a time. Oh, yeah. Michigan Daffodil canned stuffed cabbage casserole, which is awesome. very similar to the cabbage roll casserole that I make. Right. That makes sense. So I'm definitely going to try that. What's that? 16 to 17 pints. That's amazing. <laughs> And that would be a dump and go meal. Yeah. So that's pretty awesome. So we got out into the beehives this morning. Yeah. Um, the bees were actually was, not very aggressive perfect, at all. It was, nice. it was a perfect day to do that. Yeah. The, it was a little too windy, but I think the wind worked in our favor yeah. and kept us from getting stung. But um, we, we added, we have three hives now. One is the original, one of the original hives that we have had, and then we got, we bought one from a, a farm that they specialize in the bee farm yeah. in Jennings. Yeah. Is that what it's called? Yes. The bee. Okay, the bee farm. And, obviously, uh, it's the the letter B. Farm. Okay, so we got one from from them, and that one is uh, a very. Uh, I want to say aggressive. Those bees. They're defensive. Yeah. Yeah. They're very defensive. Yeah. And then the third one, putting swarm traps out this weekend. Nice. The third one that we have is a, a, a caught swarm from a friend of ours. And it's doing pretty well, too. <laughs> uh, and then we we set up a, a swarm trap yeah. out in the yard with a pollen pallet. Well, I put a pollen patty in it coffee. to feed our bees. Um, if we catch a swarm, great. If we don't, then I'm using it as a feeder box. Um, that coffee pot sounds so good. I may have to go make coffee for myself. Yeah. Sorry, Kate. Um, it's finishing up now. Give me just a second. I'm allergic to generous beekeepers. They give me hives. <laughs> Heirloom permaculture. Oh, <laughs> I figured that's who it was. Kate, watch out for the cat. Yes. <laughs> Put a lid on your coffee. <laughs> I was I was concerned before we started because my my screen was still only showing me that still showing me that only one was waiting, which is uncommon for us. I thought maybe I'd scheduled too late or something. And then come to find out, I looked over at Amy's screen and it was showing 11 waiting. So it, I just needed to refresh. It wasn't refreshing on its own. So that's all that was. It's good to have everyone here tonight. Gary B, even. It's nice to have you. <clears throat> Kate is back on her original channel. And the good news is she was el still eligible for monetization. So we're working on that process. I'm excited for her. Yeah. So those of you that know, Kate was locked out of the Inside Kate's Kitchen channel. So she made a new one called From Kate's Kitchen, where she was, um, they were live streaming, her and, and David, while he was still with us. They were live streaming uh, from that channel. And then... Kate's computer got fried by what was it? Coffee. Coffee. Yeah. Coffee got spilled on the call on the computer and the cat. Yeah. Um, the cat was unhappy. The computer just didn't make it. And uh, so she grabbed up David's computer, and lo and behold, it was still signed out, signed into inside Kate's kitchen. So she got her channel back, her original one. That's the story there. 
we were talking um, about well we were talking about defensive. big bear says my reminder reminded me see how how great it is <laughs> to have a reminder i have one set up for um kate's live every sunday because it's sunday at two and we're normally outside working now yeah. i need to set myself a reminder for for saturday nights well yeah but well i normally catch the evening ones on like the alerts on my phone but because Kate's is in the middle of the afternoon, I normally miss that one because we're outside busy fiddling around in the yard. So I have a reminder for that one. So I definitely don't miss it. The only time I normally miss it is if we have company over or we're like visiting somewhere else. I use the wrong spoon again. Kate needs to reload the video. Well, the only the only videos that she had done on the from Kate's Kitchen channel are the are some um, some live streams. So uh, I don't. Yeah, know. if you I'm, go to Inside Kate's Kitchen, I don't know how available there. <clears throat> uh, yeah, we appreciate the thumbs up. Thank you for that that reminder, Michigan Daffodil. We we're talking about aggressive bees. Well, those bees, I don't think they're aggressive. I think they're defensive. When you crack open the hive, they were more more defensive than the other two. Well, yesterday I did some weed eating around the, the apiary, and uh, they weren't hmm. happy about that. <laughs> well, would you be? No, probably not. If I didn't know what's up. Yeah, if you were a bee. <laughs> uh Oh, we had some storms come through this week. Mm, yeah. Which they weren't terrible for they us They weren't personally. near as bad as, as what they were calling for in this area. <clears throat> Thank God. Thing, things this far south kind of just broke up and <clears throat> they weren't so bad. But uh, up north of us, <clears throat> excuse me, uh, north of us, there was, a, there was one tornado confirmed, I believe. And uh, there were some places in Texas that I know there was really one in, around well. New Orleans. Oh, around New Orleans? Yeah. That's right. I forgot about that um, one. There was a 25-year-old that uh, didn't make it. Mm. Well, that's he, not good. He was a graduate of UL. I saw that on the news today. Um, it's in a little little town near near New Orleans I'd never heard of. I can't pronounce it, so. By you doing says it broke up before getting there too. Good. Awesome, awesome. Getting started on homesteading. Did you hear? Quite the heavy, bub. About the Iowa Iowa girl who won the science award, where she monitored the sound of the hives on their farm, to be able to know how the bees are doing health wise. Huh. Oh, that's interesting. Oh, I believe it. They they definitely make noise like different um humming noises when they're mad or hungry or angry or gary says my son gets rid of the queen in an aggressive hive and puts a queen from a calm hive well, i don't know that we're that that advanced as far as uh beekeeping we're still i, I still i mean we've been at it for could, three I years could, but I, I still consider ourselves beginners because we don't really we don't hit it hard it's just it's it's more of a like a little hobby i guess yeah I could call Frank and he could come help me with that, but they're really, they're not aggressive until you pop the, the top on the hot. And in that instance, they're not really being aggressive. They're being defensive. Yeah. They have B attitudes. <laughs> That's awesome. It did get some rain, a lot of rain two nights ago, almost two inches in half an hour. Wow. <laughs> I don't know how many inches we got because my rain gauge is still broken. But, oh, I, I just saw that one before it disappeared there. See the teenager in the red truck that drove into the tornado. I did see that. Yes. I, and then I saw someone take the same clip and add uh, the Chevy like a rock song to it. <laughs> that was awesome. That was great. Glass rain, rain gauge broke when it froze. Need to get another one. Hmm. That happened here yep. too uh back that's, in february of last year that's when i don't yeah. that's why i don't have one 
So, yeah. I still don't have my notebook. I don't know what I did with it. I moved things around, so. So the topic tonight is uh, how to keep your food preps from spoiling. First of all, I oh. got an awesome friend in, in uh, Michigan. I went and checked the mailbox today, and I was hey, Stringfield ecstatic. Because I always get cool stuff from Michigan. To <laughs> but today I got calendula seeds. There is bright yellow, light yellow, and large orange calendula seeds. And there's little tiny seeds in those packets. And I got to tell y'all, calendula seeds are like the coolest looking seed. They don't look like a seed at all. It's Can you see it? I'm not sure what I'm They're like at. little. Oh, weird. Yeah. They're loopity loo. <laughs> I, I don't know. You know my descriptions. <laughs> the weird thing is I get it. <laughs> I have never grown calendula. Um, Patty, I think it was Patty Mac that sent me, uh, Southern Blessed sent me some calendula, calendula seeds. Flower. And I hadn't, I haven't gotten to try, I hadn't gotten to try them yet. Are you going to make seed tape with them? I hadn't considered that. I haven't either. I was just going to plant them. In, we had, we started a um, pollinator garden this year. So it's, we're, we're looking to attract bees and butterflies <laughs> and, and different things like that that are pollinators. So. Speaking of pollinator garden, that's another thing we were able to accomplish today. Yes. Uh, right on the edge of our property, there's some uh, some maypops growing, which is a wild a native passion vine. <clears throat> so we uh, we went and found some that were just popping out of the ground because they propagate underground through the roots. And uh, hold that thought. Uh, Mama Bear asked, "What are they? Hi, Lori. Flower or food? Technically, they're both. They're flowers, but they're edible. You can make tea with them." Um, you can make a salve with them. They have tons of medicinal uses that I may end up doing a video on because uh, I've been looking into all kinds of stuff that you can do with calendula. Uh, calendula salve is one of the things that the Stivers does, I believe. Mm -hmm. um, so, uh, Maypops, uh, Wild Passion Vine. So we get we grabbed some of those uh those that were popping up out of the ground and we chopped them off with my new hori hori which i need to show you that you didn't chop anything you oh, left it outside i'm not gonna go get it right now uh anyway hori hori is a cool little tool it's like a like a little shovel anyway shovel knife work, combination yeah i'll work on doing a video of the calendula as it grows and and then uh as we harvest and what we can do with them when is a, a good, good time, time to collect elderberry cutting no. really when when they're dormant like two months ago yeah they're, but it's better in the winter you but can, you, can you can make it work now. now we're we stay so warm here we have such mild winters usually that uh they never go completely dormant kate if you come visit um i can get you some passion vine that it grows like literally all over in the ground it grows like rambo a garden knife <laughs> robin loves her rambo garden knife oh nice <laughs> we have one that's similar but um it's got a forked end on it yeah i don't like that one as much he doesn't like it i, like I do it. i like it but now that i have that new one <clears throat> all right so how to keep your food preps from spoiling first of all what are food preps um an extended <laughs> an, 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 uh, it's basically pan a pantry with an extended course, shelf life is what we we call it a prepper pantry ours is a working pantry so it's constantly we take from it we replenish rotate. we rotate yeah uh hey barb can i Kate grow an elderberry plant in a container you can but they do much better in the in the ground kate asked if we were trying to bar bribe her to come for a visit always always <laughs> kate <laughs> uh so really there's there's six uh, enemies of food preps and whether you're talking about um whether you're talking about store-bought cans canned goods or home canned items or 
you know, dehydrated stuff, even, even the, uh, oh, what is it? Freeze dried stuff. These are all things that, uh, that we stash away for food or something, things to eat. If, you know, things go south, if the blank hits the fan, you might say. Fermented and you can say shit. I can say shit. Okay. <laughs> Is that the passion flower you were talking about? Yes. Um, the passion flower is one of the things that we did today. Um, the medicinal flower that I was talking about is the calendula. So I don't want to get those mixed up. So passion passion flowers, though, actually do have um, some medicinal uses. Uh, I know the passion leaves can be used too. Um, I'm gonna have to look some of that stuff up. I might have to like start doing some herbal remedy videos sometimes we spread ourselves a little thin and we <laughs> don't really we, we can't answer the questions <laughs> we're, we're not experts on everything so and i'm not afraid to admit that sunny's place hola emma no what i like to do um <clears throat> before i make anything with with something new that i haven't done before i do a lot of research i don't take research oh, no. from um just one place Unless it's, you know, somebody I really know. Well, on that note, I've often said that I don't get all my Jesus in one place either, because that's how cults are formed. I like to, I like to put, what? You, it just caught me off guard. <laughs> <laughs> well, I, no, I mean, seriously, if, if, you know. I know, but I was trying to keep coffee from coming if out you of get, house. If you get all of your. Uh, religious uh, religion advice, I guess, uh, from one particular place, then that opens up the door, for the potential for uh, spiritual abuse from narcissistic uh, pastors. <clears throat> I've heard calendula salve is really good. There's all um, lotion bar that you can make with it, which I thought was pretty neat because um, I do have a lot of um dry skin in the winter time on my hands all right so mm. there's there's six enemies to your food preps and in particular order we'll we'll mention one and we'll kind of discuss it so the first one is pests what sort of pests can be uh can get into your food preps well m mice first uh ants um for things like rice and beans and, uh, you know, corn and such grains, um, th there's weevils that can be in, yeah, oh, pantry moths, yeah. Um, the eggs can be in some of the grains, which is why we like to oven can our grains. <laughs> so Sean in Alaska. Oh my goodness. No, that's good. I'm glad I wasn't drinking my coffee at that moment because we might have had a, a dead laptop. Oh, Kate says neighbors can be pests. So this is true. This is true. That's a good point, though. Yeah, that's something that I hadn't even thought of. You know, people, uh, people who have not prepped can can be pests. And I've, I've often, I've often thought about that thought ahead on that. If, uh, if somebody comes to my door, no matter how well I know them, if they're not willing to work now, this is ta I'm talking about after the shit hits the fan. <clears throat> if they're not here willing to work, then they might just get a sandwich and some directions and that's all they might get from me. Well, some type of con uh, contribution. That's what I'm talking about. It may about. not yeah. be physical labor. Some sort of barter, you know? Don't just ask for a handout. Offer something in return. Can't shake my dehydrated stuff without the dog begging. Oh, that's funny. <laughs> Rotation of your pre preps is a huge part of avoiding spoilage. Yes, and yeah. we're, that's one thing we're going to be getting to. Also, Sean, you're getting ahead of me. Mm. It takes a big live trap for the neighbors. <laughs> I imagine it would, yes. 
uh, let's see, the next one that I have written down here is temperature. So temperature extremes like freezing and really hot weather mm -hmm. can affect your food preps. One thing Kate says, she also, as she said, I also buy for giveaways, lots of rice and beans. And it's good to have those things on hand as a barter item or a here I can help with this, but that's all I can do. That's all I can do. Yeah. yeah. You know, at least you're 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 able to help someone without turning them away with nothing. Right. <laughs> Maybe to start drinking away from the computer. <laughs> right. Guess when I learned how to throw a pickaxe. All right. Got a new pickaxe. Hmm. That's great. That's so cool. Don't get any ideas because you're not throwing anything sharp <laughs> in our house. Okay, so on the temperature one, there's not really a whole lot of discussion. You know, uh, you want to try to try to keep your your pantry a good stable. Um, Ideally about 65 degrees, but you know, with a little variation in there would be okay. Okay. <clears throat> See, that's what I knew this was going to come up. Michigan Daffodil said I have a well room off the basement that has canned food. Yeah. Here, a basement is not even an option unless we're building it above ground level. Well, yeah. In, in Louisiana, in our area, at least Southwest Louisiana, uh, the water table is damn near above ground. So, <laughs> I mean, there is no no room for a basement. Right. I can throw regular axes. Does that count? <laughs> I can throw an axe. That doesn't mean I'm going to hit it. Or it's not going to, it doesn't mean I'm going to hit what I, what I want to hit with it. Let me put it that way. We need scuba equipment in the basement. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Dig a hole, get a pond. Exactly. That's where the pond came from. Yep. They hit um there's some aquifers, yeah. It, it just started yeah or some natural springs. It's seeping in. It started seeping in. Yeah. That's the pond in our backyard. Uh so the next one would be humidity and moisture. Under the bed with a dust ruffle to cover the food. Good idea. Yeah. Um <clears throat> Well, back on the temperature <laughs> one and, and the humidity. Uh, here in, in our area with the summers that we get, okay. uh, without air conditioning, uh, we'd, be, we'd be in some serious trouble. Well, we're going to look into some solar panels. I would like to have enough to run a fan or two at least um, nice. to start out with. Um, that's, that's a goal <clears throat> is to eventually do some kind of small solar system that we can at least run little things, you know, um, we'll get there eventually this COVID thing and oh, the gas COVID. prices and ugh. so many obstacles lately. Yeah. But even though there are obstacles, I'm glad to have, uh, experience and the skills under our belts. To be able to make it through these tough times. Right. I hope to get enough solar panels to run all three of my freezers in my fridge. And that's the whole, my whole thing is I don't want to have to run the freezers. Ah, there's Rebecca Davis. Rebecca, um, I have a question for you. I'm sorry. I, I have to, real quick. Um, our Abbey is not the same Abbey as Bountiful Harvest Abbey. I want to make sure that this is for our Abbey and not for someone else before we show it off and give it to Abbey. I can't run my freezers. My neighbors will be eating grilled beef and broth. <laughs> well, that's the whole thing. I'm trying to move everything from the freezer to the pantry <clears throat> by canning it. So it is for her. Okay. Okay. Good deal. So, okay. So Rebecca Davis sent Abby a gift. Wait, it says there is a joke in there, but I'm not sure if Abby would get mad. Well, Abby's not here. So 
<laughs> Wait, but that's from Sean. I don't, yeah, I don't know. Uh, so, Rebecca. I'm so lost. <laughs> made, made this. Oh, there's a card inside. I didn't know. That. I told you. Okay. That. All right. You that's just Rebecca's info. <laughs> Abnormal. <laughs> so, Rebecca made this awesome winter hat for Abby. Mm -hmm. That's so really cool. pretty. It's really nice. Thank you so much, Rebecca. I've seen like Abby this... hasn't seen it yet, but I know when she does, she'll be very thankful. I've seen the solid colored ones, but I like this one. It's multicolored, but the it's not just a red, a blue, and a green. You know. No, I I think is it's... this the type of yarn that just changes colors? Is one one is piece it? of yarn? I think it might be. It looks like it might be. Still though, the way it's crisscrossed or looped or. It's not for my head. What's it for then? Abby's. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> that's the gradient color yarn. Okay, yes. That's what, yeah, that's what I was trying to think of. <laughs> oh, gosh. Christine Beetle, hello and welcome. That's the kind of yarn that, that all those are on the same. <laughs> Yeah, whatever that is. Mm. Abby's head, Brent. <laughs> See? <laughs> I wonder why it smells like your head. <laughs> oh, man. Well, she'll know that you put it on your head because uh, she may go back and watch the live. I don't know. <laughs> it would certainly keep my head warm. I'm just saying. Mm -hmm. Well, you have the one with the um, beard attached. Oh, that, yeah. Um, Who gave us that? Off kilter. Off kilter homestead. Yep. Yeah. That's because you work at the firehouse and you couldn't have your beard yeah, all the time. I can't so have a big homestead he, or beard. He had so someone um, knit it for you. <laughs> yeah. So basically, the one that I have, I'm not sure where it is right now, but the one that I have, it's the hat. But attached to the hat is a full beard made of yarn. So it's funny and it's cool. That's really neat. That's pretty. I like the color. The one I made you should keep your head warm too. And you have a scarf that matches. Yes, Kate made you one. Yours oh, is red. Right. Mine is purple. Yeah. Yeah, mine's purple to match my, um, I call it my cape. <laughs> The weirdest thing though, okay, mm -hmm. when you knit yarn together, there's tons of little holes in it. Like you can hold it up to the light and see. But when you wrap that sucker around you, it is like the warmest yeah. blanket yeah. ever. How does that, how, I don't. Afghans are the same way. I call them Africans, but yeah. I never could say it right. <laughs> oh my. <laughs> okay, so moving on. But seriously though, when you wrap around wrap it around yourself with, you know, it just I don't understand how the yeah, air hot pockets air are insulation. That's... But how is it a pocket? It <laughs> it goes right through. Oh. <laughs> Afghans, yeah. <laughs> it's like bird feathers, the whole trap body heat and hold it in. Huh. That's why the ducks can float around on the pond when it's like 30 when below and they don't care. Yeah. Mimsy. Uh, oh, man. I'm well, glad to know that you are okay. We love you too, Mimsy. And Mimsy, I just want you to know. Just kidding. Um, that was not a buffer. <laughs> Stop. <laughs> Oh man, Mimsy's gonna send you stuff in the mail that's not so nice. <laughs> Light through it because the fibers are so small. Huh. Lori said the doctor released her to go back to work on Monday. Awesome, Lori. Mermaid blanket. I think so. It's like it's the tail of a mermaid or yeah, a blanket in, the, in that shape. I couldn't do that. Yeah. Feet steel that long. 
Boom. Every every time he's gonna talk about underwear. Um, all right. So the next, uh, the next thing, the next any of your preps is oxygen. And for us, mo well, I mean, we buy canned items uh, from the store and we can our own stuff. So there's, uh, that's already an oxygen barrier on those. Things. Right. Um, <clears throat> and the reason why is because the, the harmful microbes and bacteria and such, they need oxygen to survive. Right. That's why oxygen is such a bad deal. Uh, oxygen also. But that's can why we can vacuum help to seal. Spoil things. We can vacuum seal in the jars now, though, without electricity. Right. Thanks to art. Yeah. The lonely prepper homestead is that? That's right. Lonely prepper. Yeah. Yeah. How about an inventory sheet for preps? That would be great. Yeah. Great idea. Um, we uh, always, um, I try to always label everything and put a, any, a date on. If you need any sort of form or spreadsheet or anything nerdy like that, you can get with heirloom permaculture. <laughs> you just called him nerdy. Yeah. He'll say he'll say it too. That's not nerdy. I like spreadsheets, not as much as John does, but I do like it for something. <laughs> <clears throat> yeah see i don't know if i could do one of those little mermaid blanket things i wiggle too much uh, on the subject of oxygen oxygen absorbers as well can be used try to keep an inventory but mine changes so often it's impossible to keep up yeah it, yeah it is you'd almost have to have a marker board or something and every single time that you put stuff in or take stuff out you'd have to change numbers and you know somebody's gonna walk by my marker board and way too close and take half of it off <laughs> Suck. i do that on the calendar on the refrigerator i go to write something and my hand takes off some mm -hmm. of it so yeah lefty you erase as you go <laughs> sorry <laughs> All right, so the next thing, the fifth item on the list is light. Light can degrade. <laughs> Dry rate sport, yeah. Uh, that's why it's so it's such a good idea to if you're gonna have if you have um, home canned items, either keep them in a dark place, or uh, that's why some of the jars are uh, like a brown amber amber, amber color. That's why beer comes in a dark color bottle. Kate says she even tried keeping an inventory on a spreadsheet. Then she broke her computer and poof, oh, there with the boy. inventory. Oh, man. Uh, I like the marker board or a clipboard or something like that. My my biggest problem <clears throat> is um, remembering to add to it and take away from it. Oh, Amy, weren't you weren't you going to show us some binder that you have? Oh, yeah, I'm supposed to do a video on that. Oh, well, let me put that on the video topics list. Yes, it's. Uh, Is it the homestead binder? No. I'm just going to put binder. That's yeah. That's just put binder, list. and I'll go back. If it's not the homestead binder, it's, I don't know. Um. It is, but it isn't. Yeah, I, I got it. Okay. Before we move on to another topic, there's only one thing left on the list. Don't let your cans go to the light. So the last thing that uh, it's funny on the list of things that can ruin your preps is time. No matter how thorough uh, you work on eliminating all the other things that can ruin your preps. There's still a time limit mm -hmm. on most everything. An expiration date, if you will. <clears throat> so yes, that's why it's important to rotate. rotate. Yeah. Thank you, Miss Patty. Yeah. Well, you should every once in a while go through and make sure that nothing is expired. 
And it makes it a lot easier for the, the store-bought items because they have a date on them. Our, our stuff has a date so you can of take, when it was made. So you can, well, right. Right. And if you have home can items, of course, it's good to put a date on those as well. Uh, I know I went through, there was something the other day. Something in the pantry. I don't remember what it was. Mustard. And we don't use mustard very often. So, and we have like four, four bottles of mustard. And the, no, look, the best buy date is best buy such and such date. Right. Um, that is not an expiration date. Some people see that as an expiration date. And the company, the manufacturer is okay with that because that means you'll throw that away and go buy some more. So they're not going to correct you. But if it's a best buy date, then that just gives a roundabout date past the manufacture date that it would still be as good as new. Right. Not be quite the same taste or texture, or what have you. Michigan Daffodil says I need to go up there and organize more. <laughs> I'd love to go in the summer, in the summertime. <clears throat> I will not go anywhere where that warehousing white junk is falling from the sky and i think it's still snowing up there for you guys uh, warehousing skills come in handy for managing preps this is true i imagine now read kate can you imagine an inventory from mine in the past eight days <laughs> had five cases of pints today i've passed along 150 pounds of groceries to a neighbor who is having a really hard time oh you're so sweet kate inventory can be done but yeah It'd be a little, a little tricky. Um, I know Sean talked about in his video. Which Sean? North Shore. Sean. North Shore prepared. Doing the oven canning. He puts rice in half gallon jars. He obviously does not eat near as much rice as we do in the South. We live in Southwest Louisiana. We we store our rice in five gallon buckets. <laughs> buckets with an S. Mm -hmm. And that's a rotating bucket. <laughs> <laughs> they um, lose over acres. Michigan said no snow for me, maybe a, a bit next week. It was in the 70s here today. It was very warm. Now the, the breeze was a little chilly. It was perfect weather though to get into the bees. We didn't sweat at all. I needed a jacket first thing this morning, and I'm probably going to need one by the time the live stream's over with. But during the day, it was, I could have been in shorts. Right now, it's 64 degrees. Tonight, overnight, it's our low is 44, and then it's going to be back up into the 70s again. See, Patty, that, that's a great, um, a great thing, though. She uses the half-gallon jars. Fit better on the shelves, and they're not as heavy to lift. So for somebody uh, that, okay. you know, that needs yeah. a smaller item and there's sometimes that it takes me, both me and Abby to get that bucket off that well, shelf. And, and that's the thing though, you know, no one has the answer to prepping. No, prepping is customized to what you need it to be. That's exactly right. What fits us for a family of three is not going to fit someone who's alone, you know? Right. Oh, I have to do something with my pantry because my son is coming back in June. My pantry is his room. Oh. <laughs> um, just slide it all to one side and put a <laughs> bed in the corner. That's all I need. Do what works for you. That's right. You can store the main quantity in a five-gallon container. Just refill those smaller jars as they get empty. That's yeah. that's what we do. Yeah, we have a smaller, uh, probably I guess it's around a one get one gallon container for rice and we refill it to right. use out of in the kitchen and we do that with we have a kitchen pantry that is like a normal people's pantry it's got small amounts like the other day when i canned sweet potatoes i'll keep two to four jars in the the kit, kitchen pantry and then we have the overflow pantry oh, mary beth says but it's full Oh. Well then you can bring it You can bring it to me <laughs> I'll take it 
create a layer on the floor. Yeah. And then and yeah. put plywood on that. And he'll just have a shorter ceiling. Yeah. <laughs> I need to turn heat lamps back on for my quail chicks out in the quail tractor. Did we ever? Oh, that's babies. Okay, yeah. You definitely need a heat light on them. Say it loud enough for the other channels to hear. Everyone, everyone's needs are different. Every family preps, every family's preps may look different. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. And here's another thing too. Um, that something that we will not do is try to sell you a product that you don't need. Well, yeah, but if if I can, forty quarts of sweet potatoes. You know, Patty might not do any because she hates sweet potatoes, you know, or can't have them for whatever dietary reason. So my preps are going to be different than someone else's. You need to stock up on the things that you're going to eat, that you're going to use. And it's not just food items, guys. Um, laundry soap. You're going to use laundry soap. You're going to use dish soap. You know, all these other things. But don't go out and buy something that's <clears throat> cheap that you're not going to use. Don't go get a different, you wouldn't go get a different uh, brand of laundry soap just because it's cheaper. You know, I mean, some people may, some people won't, but, oh, that's another good one. Bleach. Yes. Yeah. Um, uh, which we need some of. As far as, uh, what I just said about selling products, you, that is not our intent. We we don't want to, we're not trying to get rich off of YouTube. That's just silly. We want to share information. And for that reason, I hesitate to get, to ever reach out to try to get sponsorship. Right. Because I'm not trying to push a product. That's not what our channel is about. Right. Not to say that we never will get sponsorships, but at this point that we're, we're not interested. Right. Now, if, if we show you a cool item, it's because it's a cool item and we like it. Well, the, the same thing with our the stuff on our Etsy store. You know, if you can grow your own elderberries and make your own your <clears throat> own elderberry syrup, by all means. But we have it available for those that can't or don't have the well, availability to. In, in fact, I was uh, there was a I had an elderberry syrup client. And uh, when she found out that we had a video on YouTube and how to make it. She said, well, you need to take that off. You're, you're going to kill your business. I'm not in business. Um, I'm in the business of sharing information and teaching people how to do it for themselves. So what we've done with the elderberries is if somebody, uh, if somebody wants finished elderberry syrup, they can get that from us. If somebody wants to know how to make elderberry syrup, we have information on them on, on that for them. Uh, all the way up to if somebody wants to figure out how to find elderberries in the wild, mm -hmm. every step of the process, we have the information or the product there to help you. That's what it's about. Right. Exactly. Okay. I buy mine because I can't grow them. elderberry and I like to support my, exactly. And, and that's what we're all about. That's what we're all about is supporting each other. So, you know, um, I've gotten a few things from, Emma found from a lot Henry. Of awesome. That's great. But um, no, we have things available, but we're not pushing you to buy anything. I saw one on Amazon. The company was asking buyers to give them a positive review and they would get five dollars. There's not yeah. Nope, nope, not doing it. And we there's been a lot of um, review things. Our most watched video is a rat trap review. And they sent us a rat trap, told us to review it and make a video. So that's what I did. I didn't tell, I didn't even, well, I did put a link, yeah. but I didn't tell people that it was a great rat trap that they should go out and buy it. I did an honest review and that was that. Mm -hmm. But, and it's still one, our most watched video. It's crazy. I don't even like the video. <laughs> Miss something here. Bleach tablets and make a quart at a time. Don't use much and it will go, it will go bad. The tablets cost less. 
if you have the water to mix it with too. That's a great idea, Emma. Huh. I've never seen bleach tablets. That must be in the pool section or something. Oh, maybe. Oh, that's another, that's something. Uh, I was told that uh, pool chemicals have gone ridiculously expensive. It, well, in this area, not only are they expensive, but they're hard to find. Uh, hey, my Jayla. mom has an in-ground pool and uh, ha they have a saltwater pool and uh, they're still having trouble. Bleach tablets on Amazon. Huh. Should have known. Amazon's got everything. There was a discussion in our group the other day on uh, iodine. I don't remember who asked the question. It was one of you, I think. Uh, one of you here wow. in the chat. Uh, that was Leslie Fox. Oh, it was Leslie. Yeah. Uh, her channel is um, Scratch Made Homestead. Uh, asked about oh, in the laundry section. <clears throat> asked about the iodine tablets uh, and uh, Doc for radiation. Doctor Eric Wormsley from their name. Their Goshen. channel name is Goshen Prepping. Now they used to be out of Goshen. Changed their channel name to Goshen Prepping, and uh, I found out that he's an expert on the topic. So. If you're interested in that, that would be the place to go is Goshen Prepping mm -hmm. on YouTube. Amazon doesn't have my free solar generator. Oh. No, you're not going to find anything <laughs> free on Amazon. Well, except maybe a few books. And they're usually not the good books. Usually. <clears throat> One of my most watched videos isn't even mine. A friend who is not on YouTube filmed herself showing how to diaper a goat. Uh, uh. Oh, a goat <laughs> kid. I put it on my channel. Wow. You know, way back. Goshen Prepping used to be Out of Goshen. Out of Goshen was their name. Yeah. Out of Goshen. And way back, uh, we were actually on our way back, from, back home from the 2019 Deep South Homestead Gathering in Wiggins, Mississippi. By the way, hi, uh, Life with Blinda and Chuck. Good to see you. Uh, so we were on our way back from the Deep South Homestead Gathering. And I've got my phone up on the dash using the GPS on it. And I start seeing so-and-so subscribe, so-and-so, because we were still a small channel then. And I'm like, what is going on? And that's when I found out, out of Goshen, who is a larger channel than us, had given us a shout out so it was really a cool thing of them to do we were still a small channel nobody knew us really and they did that for us so right on out of goshen or excuse me goshen prepping now the goshen family page has the family videos now that's awesome they split it oh that is cool yeah good idea bleach stands in a bottle found them <clears> at walmart in the laundry section back when the liquid bleach was all gone Huh. That's good to know. I'm showing 40 thumbs up. If we could try to get it to 50 before the end of the live stream, that would be awesome. I would love it. Looks like we may have a bit of a smaller crowd tonight, which is fine. It's a little more intimate. It's all right. It's cool. <laughs> we can hang out. Drink a little coffee. There have been a couple of channels that are splitting their channels by interest like that. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. I think so too. Yeah, if they're if they're big enough channels, yeah, that that they can do that. Mm -hmm. Ours, uh, I I created that second channel, um, Cajun Prep Setter, but uh, I really just abandoned it. I we talk about everything here now, so I didn't really need the second channel because I was I was talking about like more. Uh, more daring topics over there, I guess. And we've just kind of incorporated that into our live streams here. So, well, COVID kind of <laughs> like COVID pissed me off to begin with. Well, okay. I wasn't going to say that. I was trying to <laughs> avoid saying that, but so, I think COVID pissed off so a lot what of people. Happened with, I and should, they've gotten to where they just say whatever. So. On Facebook, I think it was, it was either today or yesterday. I had posted a memory of mine from 2020. 
And in that in that post of 2020, it was March 23rd, 24th, whatever it was, I had posted that um, the measures that... Thanks for coming, Debbie. The measures that people are taking right now, this back two years ago, are... Um, I don't remember exactly how I worded it, but basically I was on board with taking extreme measures for a short amount of time because that's what I was, I was believing it. And then I started yeah, to understand that it was all just really a power grab and they haven't released that power for the past two years now. We're, we're more than two years into 15 days to stop the spread. So and it's ramping back up again. Are they trying oh, like with Linda? They're, they're trying, trying to. to. It'll never happen. People are so over it. Eric Caswell. Hey, give me a thumbs up when you come in, guys. I appreciate it. It helps our channel be be pushed out. It helps to negate the fact that they don't push our channel because of the things that we talk about. <laughs> Oh, I got your suburban hillbilly. <clears throat> Keep talking. Uh, I ran out of things to say. Impossible. <laughs> <laughs> um, I was so I we didn't go over the news, uh, the crazy news <laughs> this week like Told I normally you. do. Part of part of that is because I've really been out of the loop as far as news goes, but I do know. That's because we've been working in the yard. I do know that Biden spoke the words in a speech, the new world order. They're not even hiding it anymore. Um, I also know that the new nominee for the Supreme Court can't define what a woman is. And also, there was one more thing that I can't think of right off the cuff. I know the fastest female swimmer is not a female. Yeah, she was. Uh, I saw. Oh man, <laughs> somebody put a meme on Facebook that she was. Uh, she was caught with performance enhancing testicles. <laughs> <laughs> That's just. <a> pretty... <laughs> okay, I didn't see that, but. Yeah, wow. Also, the woman of a year, woman of the year is not a woman. Okay. Do you have fire? Do you have the fire blankets at your house? What fire blankets? What are we talking about? I don't know. Lori asked. Airlines are pushing back on. Uh, yep, yeah, I did see that. To push. Um, airlines are pushing back. I, think I know they're actually Louisiana, suing Louisiana, the Louisiana legislator are pushing to make asking for your vaccination status illegal. Which I'm good. Food shortages. That did make mainstream yes. news. So be aware the panic buying is going to commence. Yep. <clears throat> and the woman of the year is hideous. See, I, I don't know. Yeah. Okay, fire yeah, blankets. Emma, you're right. Fire blankets are a good idea for areas where there are seasonal fires. We don't have that here. We don't have seasonal fire like wildfires and stuff here. No, we we're 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 not a wildfire threat in our area. We're a lot of there's a lot of marshy swamp around here. Doesn't but the mean swamp it, does catch it, fire. It, it doesn't mean it can't happen. Believe it or not, the swamp usually does. They do a control burn to burn off the um Jeez, the dry stuff. Six ninety nine a pound <sighs> last week. Oh my god, that's outrageous. Ours went up a little bit. But um, there was just a sale on Lake Quarters for 49 cents a pound <clears throat> for Lake Quarters. I missed it. It was limit two, but they'll do it again. I'm trying to remember what that other thing was. The I pork picnics are on sale right now for 89 cents a pound. Yeah. There was something I wanted to mention tonight. I thought of it a while ago. I'm going to think of it eventually, hopefully, before the stream's over with. So Eventually. Hopefully. Uh, <laughs> Or more of a wild flood problem than a wildfire problem. Yeah, well, except for when it's 
Flash floods our and appliances. river floods are uh, pretty common terminology around these parts. But we're we're actually up high where we are right now, where the house is. Um, we have to watch with the canal in the back flooding and around the beehives flooding. Yeah. Other than that, I don't think we're going to get water in the house. No. We're on, uh, we're, we're, our house, it's, it's double wide trailer. So it's already, what, like two foot off the ground. And then we're also sitting on a hill. If you can call it a hill. Wow. Louisiana. So. $24.95 for 10 pounds of chicken, boneless, skinless. Wow. I get boneless, uh, skinless chicken breast. It's a, oh, I remember the other thing. It's a 10 pound bag. I paid $20 for it. That's two dollars a pound, and they're paying six ninety nine. That's crazy. What's the other thing? The laptop. Kate's. No, not Kate's. <laughs> not Kate's laptop. The laptop. The laptop that's gonna. I'll be right back while you talk about that. Burn everything down to the ground because of the information that's on it. Uh, yeah, and uh, from what I understand. The Trump administration has uh, started a lawsuit. Seriously. Started a lawsuit to enforce an investigation on everyone that's implicated in the information uh, on the laptop. Is that what that is? Yes. I saw he was suing Hillary Clinton and a few others. Yes. Like, so, like I said on Facebook, be prepared. The beast will not here. buy will not die peacefully. Things are going to get real bad. We've actually seen a little bit of relief in the gas prices around here. Um, I've seen it go as low as 379, which was 20 cents cheaper than that particular place had it when it was at the highest. So now they're back up to 389. So can't I can't really say whether that's a bit of a relief or not. Probably not lasting. Um, for, like Linda. From what I understand, the Trump administration or Trump started a lawsuit um, against all of those who are implicated by the information in the laptop that was finally admitted to be real after all of the media insisted that it was Russian disinformation um, two years ago. Yes, I gone up to 209, but was down. Wait, I'm assuming you meant 409. Is that right, uh, J Love? Yeah, I'm, I'm kind of wondering actually if they didn't go up really high and then come down a little bit so that we would all just kind of breathe a sigh of relief and stop bitching about it. Because really, I mean, is it relief for us to still be twice what it was uh, for the gas price to be twice, double what it was uh, before the election? <clears throat> yes, by you, Dawn, I saw that too. Manipulation, that's a good way of putting that. I yes. So if I'm missing anything as far as news and current events goes, please, uh, please feel free to bring it up. Just if you do state it in such a way that um, 
we don't attract the attention of the sensors, if you know what I'm saying. <clears throat> you know, we started the homestead lifestyle or leaning toward the homestead lifestyle, trying to be more self-sufficient. Uh, that's been a good while ago, probably about a decade, more than a decade ago. Uh, and we did that to try to get away from all this garbage of the real world, I guess you could say. And um, it worked. It worked for a good long time. I wasn't worried about... Um, I wasn't as worried about politics and just the buffoonery. But the problem is, while I wasn't watching and listening, things got even stupider. And that's why, that's why I care so much about politics now, is because I understand the fact that you can't get away from it. These people... In the in politics, yeah, buffoonery, yeah, right. Uh, these people making these decisions, it affects us whether we like it or not. No matter how much we withdraw, you say the word buffoonery. I did. I said buffoonery. <laughs> no matter how much we withdraw from society, the buffoonery still affects us. So. I mean, what can we do about that? Well, we can get involved in local politics. Uh, you don't have to hold a position. You can go to your school board meetings. Even if you don't have a child in school, if you're paying those taxes, you're the boss. Suburban Hillbilly, try refreshing because the audio on mine was, was giving trouble too. Now that you're back, I'm going to ask you to hold down the fort because now I have to go take a potty break. It's all that coffee. Yep. That's why. Um, our gas price here, I don't know if you talked about that. My audio was kind of skiffy. Um, yeah, I talked about the 399, 379, back to 389. Yeah, okay. Uh, Michigan, that's that's amazing that you guys might be able to get a, a wood stove. We are in a mobile home, so a wood stove is kind of hmm, a little sketchier. So instead of that, we went we went ahead and got the um, propane heater, and a, we now have a propane tank in the yard and a propane stove. Um. The only thing we haven't changed over to propane that we could have would be the water heater. And we would have to put a new roof or move the water heater out outside of the house because um, it the, the electric one is not vented through the roof. So Okay. I got it. Michigan. We just gave a wood stove to a fellow YouTuber in the same state. That's amazing. Yeah, um, I'm I'm not really. Um, our insurance would not allow us to do a wood stove place, and even still, then our insurance gone ridiculous. We had a wood stove in a mobile home for almost 25 years. Well. It, it's not that you can't do it. It's the insurance here is going to be crazy high. Propane tank after Hurricane Ida. Uh, by you, Dawn, that's exactly what we did is after um, Hurricane Laura, we used some of our insurance money and upgraded. We got the, I say upgraded, we got a 250-gallon propane tank in the yard. And we upgraded the stove to gas. And uh, when we when we put all that in, I, we had them put in an, uh, an inlet in the floor in the dining room. 
and we got a um it's a five burner propane heater floor heater and um it works fantastic but we used it um last february when when we had that week of of freezing temperatures and the power went out and everything and this one heater um kept the house fairly warm i mean i wouldn't say it was like nice and toasty in here but um it it heated the whole house so and we're it's we're at 1700 square feet i believe <laughs> they have the wood stoves and stuff around here but they're they're pretty expensive praying for those impacted by the fires yes yes definitely um impacted by fires and well impacted by weather because there's been fires and storms and um tornadoes and all kinds of craziness um let's see <laughs> wood burning stove but there are very few trees around here so nothing to burn a cow dung heater i don't know about that kate uh, your house may not smell very nice uh, I miss having wood, wood heat. Um, we actually, um, Brett's cousin Joe has a wood burner. And, um, I think they use two to run his house and he's got a big house. It's, it's lots of rooms, but, um, man, it's nice and toasty in there, but they have a nice wooded area that they're living on. So, we don't really have the trees for that either. We need to get renter's insurance and just get enough for contents. But we built it for 10K, so we are okay with it. Huh. And see, we here we can't get renter's insurance since we own the house. Uh, Huh, that's good to know, Kate. Okay? Now I have fire. My business sold closed yesterday. Now I have six fire extinguishers from the trucks. Will they work just the same in the house? Kid, I don't see why not. A uh, fire extinguisher is a fire extinguisher, I believe. That would be a Brett question. Make sure you ask that again when he's back in here, in case I forget. <laughs> yeah, I don't know what was wrong with the sound. Um, by you dawn i got onto my phone and when i was outside and uh it, it was doing that it was cutting in and out i don't know oh, oh nothing on it huh so i don't know i don't think you can get renter's insurance when you hear when you own it i don't know that's not something i've ever asked yeah, Brett needs to answer that. But that's definitely a Brett question. We have fire extinguishers here. I mean, um, did you catch that question? Fire extinguishers. Yes. What you want to look for is a dry chem, dry chemical fire well, extinguisher. I know, but they said um, the business closed, and she has six fire extinguishers from the trucks. Well, will they work just the same in the house and shed? Um, I'm not sure what it depends on what kind of fire extinguisher that is. Yes, and you need to look for an ABC rating. Exactly. Uh, a fire extinguishers with an A rating are for typical things like wood, grass, uh, normal con combustibles. B is going to be your liquids uh, it, like gasoline, diesel, uh, oil on the stove those sorts of things. C is for electrical fires. I can't remember what D is. <laughs> uh, it's, it's a less common thing. And then there's a K that's for commercial kitchens. Uh, 
Um, let's see. Farmer in Adele Acres, hopefully you're still here. I saw your question up there. It says, do you have a storm shelter? We do not. Well, we don't have this, a storm shelter in the, in the typical sense. If there's a hurricane coming and we know it's coming, then we evacuate. Right. If there's uh, if it's a like a thunderstorm that kind of popped up on us, then we hunker down in a hallway with blank, thick blankets. Right. That's so the best we. We can do. you know people around here have been known to <laughs> put mattresses on top of themselves. Now they're recommending that people get helmets. That was something I saw during these um, the past this this past storm. That's a reasonable. I mean, that's, for when flying yeah. debris. Helmets to keep keep your head from getting hit with anything. Um, how long should a does a fire extinguisher last before it needs, it should be replaced? Um, and Kate hmm. said D is for hot temperatures. D hot, oh hot no tempers. Oh sorry. She said it's a joke. Combustible metal. metal. That's what it is. Yeah. Thank you for that mind and body. <laughs> I appreciate it. He googled it. I yeah. know he did. No, that's, that's okay. Awesome. I appreciate that's it. Awesome. I would have Googled it, but um, um, when I thing, Google things, I mess up the, the live streams. Funny so thing, funny thing it. about burning metals, um, a vehicle's steering column, there's some there's some parts in the steering column that are made of magnesium. And when that starts burning, when you've got your head in, in the window of a vehicle, a fully involved vehicle, and you're spraying water, and you hit that magnesium, and it blows up in your face, it's kind of cold. Not really, but... <laughs> We called a table into the hallway with sleeping bag. Yeah. Yep. Makes sense. Um, let's see. UL 5B. I'm not familiar with that. I'm sorry. Mom used to have us get under the bed when there was a bad BC, thunderstorm. No yeah. Uh, B and C, like I said, B, B is going to be your uh, your liquids and C is going to be electrical. It, it, that'd be good to have. Better than nothing. I no. can see it now, helmets, and then some guy will create armor for storm safety. <laughs> as far as the um, the time limit, the expiration on a fire extinguisher, um, there should be a date printed somewhere on your extinguisher. Uh, good through whatever date. Mm -hmm. uh, as long now, once it's used at all, it should be replaced. Should be able to take <coughs> extinguishers to your local fire department and have them inspected. Um, here, I don't know if the volunteer departments do that. I don't know. But you can bring them to the city now, departments. Our particular, our area, our volunteer department is now, uh, the chief of that department is... A Lake Charles Fireman. A Lake Charles yeah. Fireman. So there's a good chance that we could still get that that done there's no room in the pantry for storm <laughs> sheltering well our pantry is our, well okay the pantry is next to the back door our kitchen pantry and then our overflow pantry is our, our daughter's old room our prepper pantry i guess yeah the bulk bulk store so it's on the end of the house <clears throat> So if there's ever a tornado or anything like that, well, you need to be in the centermost part of your house, which is our living room and kitchen, which is weird. Yeah, we've got a wide open floor plan. So so we get in the hallway and close up all the, the bedroom doors and bathroom doors and everything, and we just kind of bunker down in there. A bathtub uh, is a good place, especially if it's a cast iron tub. That would be a good place to ride out a storm. Mm -hmm. A, uh, on the on the fire extinguishers the a rating is uh your typical burnable or typical combustible items like wood some of our local fire departments may do them uh, most of our our local small town fire departments are volunteers um but you can bring it into a a city department which there's Welsh Jennings, Lake Charles. Thank you, Miss Betty. Uh, I was I didn't think about the dried plant material. I'm just kind of uh, or the paper. I'm just kind of working off of memory here. 
I, don't I have appreciate a room that. In my house that does not have windows. The only room <clears throat> in our house that does not have windows is Abby's bathroom. Right. And that's so, because there's a tub shower combo on the outside wall. Yeah. Well, we opted not to get the the little tiny window above there. I don't know. That would be silly because that's on the front side of the house. Yeah. That'd be weird looking. It was it was optional, but yeah. Uh, so Britt, is it not for burning plastics? I, that's a good question that I'm not sure the answer to. Burning plastics. Hmm. Uh, I would assume that's a. But then 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 again, uh, plastics are made of petroleum products, so it might be B. That is a good question. Ladies, especially, but men too. If you get a hand injury or a bee sting on your fingers, fingers swell. The fire department can cut your ring off and probably save oh. your fingers. I learned. Oh wow. Oh wow. Well, if you notice, I don't wear any rings because I work outside in the dirt and I do a lot of canning and you know things like that. Um, my hands swell through the day anyway, so I don't actually wear my wedding bands. And I have it in a drawer in the in the bedroom, but um <clears throat> that's one thing i've never really been big on is jewelry and things like that so i don't have to worry about that but yeah she wants someone else <clears throat> wait oh my mother said uh she's just listening she She's got to go eat before I start chewing on my own leg. And Susanna <laughs> said she wants someone else's. Okay, it took me a minute to catch up there. Okay. Thanks again, Henry, at Mind and Body Co. for adding that in. Plastics is included in Class A. Awesome. Silicone ring and only wear my actual ring on date nights and special occasions. Um, what's the one? Okay, thank you for the thunder. We're almost to 50. I like, I, I have a personal goal of 50 thumbs up per live stream. If we can get to that, I would really be smiling. Thank you so much. Uh, the silicone bands are great because yeah, that'll just come off. You can, you can break it. Those are the safest. What are they? I forget the what they're tungsten. called. Oh, those Is tungsten it, ones are terrible. They're no, it's, it, you need a diamond blade to cut through it. Right, that's what I'm saying. If they get smashed onto your finger, it's not coming off easily at all. Yeah. There, well, there's a lot of people around <laughs> here. We have a lot of off drill, off, offshore drilling uh, companies in our area, and um, they recommend that you don't wear rings offshore, obviously, on the oil rigs and whether it's land base or water base or whatever. But um, my, I know my brother was talking about getting one of those tungsten ones, and uh, I think he opted for the. I think he has one. But he wears the silicone to work because if if he gets his hand caught up in anything, he's a crane operator offshore. But um, I, I mean, you'll lose your finger quick. I, just, I don't. I don't wear one. I actually saw a um, one of the medical shows that I watch. Um, I watch a bunch of them. A guy jumped off of his pickup truck, like from the bed of the truck off onto the ground and he got his ring caught on something and it literally skinned it his finger degloved his finger yeah. yeah that's called a ring avulsion and if uh jimmy fallon the late night talk show host had that happen and if you if you watch his hands closely that finger because they had to put everything back together and reconstruct the finger when he makes a fist or anything it's it's weird it's like off like this in a weird different direction it's strange. Oh. Hey, we made the 50 thumbs up. Thanks, guys. Appreciate it. I wear a ponytail scrunchie for a ring. Oh, yeah. <laughs> oh, that's a good idea. Um, I've seen people use bread ties. <laughs> Hail and strain. Hello and welcome. But um, even still, that has a little wire in it that can restrict blood flow and get pinched up. I just, a lot <laughs> of people are getting rings tattooed on. Oh, that's amazing. That makes yeah. sense. See, that I wouldn't be opposed to. I just, I can't handle, I can barely handle wearing this watch. Have a great night, j Love. Thanks for stopping by. Um, I like the watch because it, it's a step counter. But, man, when I'm working outside, that's the first thing that gets all nasty and gross. Mm -hmm. I like it because it's, um, 
it's easy to clean though. I'm not big on jewelry at all. Nothing. No. And for me, look, when I was when I was in my early twenties, I had on my left ear I had three piercings in this lobe, one in the right lobe, <laughs> and one up in the cartilage up here. I was a different animal back then. <clears throat> <laughs> with a ring tattoo, somebody can't get angry and fling the ring across the room. I mean, I guess you can with with the proper tools, but yeah, fling the whole person or the finger. <laughs> <laughs> Cut it off and fling your finger. <coughs> All right, we're an hour and a half in. So and triple. I think we're going to go ahead and make a last call for. Uh, prayer requests if you guys have anything that you, you want to add on we'd be happy to pray for you and that's something that we do uh after the stream in private we don't we don't pray on stream it's just not something that i'm really comfortable with now if there's an emergency that someone needs prayer for i have been i have prayed on stream it's just not something i, I like to do often well not all of our um watchers i guess you could call them viewers there you go are um have the same religious beliefs so try not to do we try not to be pushy with with our right i don't want to be offensive to anyone with our uh, spirituality mm. i'm so sorry about that kate oh, kaylin is a muslim i didn't know that that's cool Awesome. Huh. Gary B. Son. Prepped for Eternity Homestead. You caught us just in time, Brother Don. <laughs> We're asking for our last, it's the last call for prayer requests. And we're going to be signing off. Mama Bear, I still have you on the list. <clears throat> I visit with Michigan Daffodil every day, just about. Yeah, it's nice to see you, and it's nice <laughs> to see everyone. And I, I love, I really look forward to these Thursday night chats. Can't say nice to see you because I can't see them. Oh, see, no, you see their chat. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, brother Donnie, we made it through the storms. Great. Um, just most fine. most yeah. of it has missed us. Uh, we got quite a bit of rain, but. That was kind of a blessing Even because then, we, we needed really that. needed it. Yeah. And uh, here we are. What is it? Two days later? Or was that yesterday? I'm losing track here. No, that was Tuesday. So two days later, we don't have a single puddle in the yard and barely anything is even soggy anymore. Everything just either ran off or soaked in. So yeah. Seeing is is relative. Didn't you know that? Uh, Do face face hasn't been working for us, but uh, the Facebook Messenger. Yeah, we can do video Facebook chat. Messenger I don't video, know what the deal is. but FaceTime doesn't work. <clears throat> Des Moines had a mix um, of rain and snow this morning. Yikes. All right, so we're going to go ahead and <laughs> sign off here for the night. Thank you all so much for joining us. Remember, Thank if you, you have a prayer request, you can leave it in the chat. I'm going to leave the chat open for a while. Um, that way I can make sure that I didn't miss anything. Remember to watch for that short video that's going to come out in the morning of the fun that we had today. And uh, we appreciate you hanging out with us. And you as got always, to home, Stan. it's good to see you. I'm going to say it's good to see you, even though I'm not really seeing you, according to Amy. <laughs> <laughs> so, all right, guys. Until next week, good night and God bless. Stay safe.